Dude, I'm Adele. And I'm an HP. And with me, you could call or go online and get America's favorite PC. And if you're in a school or an office right now, you're probably using one of me. Now let's find out if, dude, you're getting Adele. And of course, I'm better. Yeah, but I mean, we're both PCs, right? Well, I mean, there's a reason why he's picking me over you. I mean, come on. We're, we're all friends here. <laughs> well, I mean, you saw the title of the video. So I guess we're just gonna have to find out. Hey, it's John from Adults Have Toys 2. It's true. I'm selling my one-year-old Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 for an HP Spectre X360 14. And probably not for the reasons you would expect. I bought my XPS after a lot of research. The XPS replaced my Samsung Chromebook Pro and the decision was partially influenced by how much I liked the design of Apple's PowerBooks in the past. You can check out this video here. I love the size and the flexibility of the Chromebook and I really enjoyed the high resolution 3x2 aspect ratio display. It was nice to read comics and get work done. Chrome OS is a really interesting platform and it's amazing at what it does well, but my portable computing needs began to expand beyond the capabilities of Chrome OS. I knew I wanted a two-in-one that was small and light, but still powerful enough to do some serious computing and maybe run an older game here and there. The Dell XPS line has always interested me and it's been held as the standard for high-end laptops for years. It marries sleek design with high build quality and top shelf components, along with the support and experience of a large company like Dell. Looking at review after review, I came to the conclusion that Dell was the best option for me. I found a great deal for a top of the line version with an i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and a 4K plus 16 by 10 display. The 10th generation Intel Ice Lake processor was a substantial jump from the previous generation, especially with the Iris Plus graphics not being completely useless when it came to semi-modern games. The RAM was a bit overkill, but appreciated, and you can never have enough storage. I love the look of it, especially the white glass fiber. The display was sharp and bright. I really like typing on that maglev keyboard, which a lot of people seem not to like. Just based on the specs, this is pretty much the perfect laptop for me. But a laptop is more than just a collection of specs. Compared to the XPS, the Spectre is a minor upgrade in most ways. The 11th generation Tiger Lake i7 processor with Intel XE graphics is a surprisingly substantial improvement over the one generation old Ice Lake. The storage is still one terabyte, but with an additional 32 gigabytes of Optane memory, which honestly I don't notice speed wise. But more storage is more storage. And the display, while lower resolution than the XPS, I'll call an upgrade. It's a 13 and a half inch, 3000 by 2000, three by two aspect ratio display. It's just as sharp as the 4K plus at this relatively small size. And I like the squarer aspect ratio. And best of all, it's an OLED. The XPS display is very bright and has great colors, but being a laptop display, it's an edge lit LCD panel. And the blacks are never truly black. It's especially noticeable in dim lighting. Where I notice it the most is watching video. Both displays will almost always have some level of letterboxing says neither one is 16 by nine. But you can see here that even though the HP has the taller aspect ratio, the letterboxing is pretty much invisible with the pixels turned off. It basically looks like you have huge bezels on a screen with the proper aspect ratio, rather than the glowing gray bars of the Dell. The only part of this package I would consider a downgrade is the RAM. It's 16 gigabytes rather than 32 gigabytes, but it is arguable that 32 gigabytes is kind of overkill in a system like this. But while all of these little upgrades are nice, that is not why I'm going through the hassle of changing laptops. Like I said before, a laptop is more than a collection of specs. The Dell fit my needs perfectly and looked sharp doing it. It was only after using it for a while that I really started to regret my purchase. It's all of the little things. One, logging into this machine. This version of the XPS doesn't have Windows Hello facial recognition. That wouldn't be a huge issue if the fingerprint reader worked, Dell integrated the fingerprint reader into the power button, which is a great idea, but something about it is really flaky. When it works, it works well, but from time to time, the computer just stops seeing it. I mean, it just stops showing up in the hardware manager at all. Windows forgets that it was even there. 
Then I waste my time trying to use the fingerprint reader and it's not going to work until finally I have to type in my PIN. I contacted Dell regarding this and I also had a few dead pixels so they sent a tech out to my house. In order to replace the fingerprint reader he had to replace the keyboard deck, the logic board, and to replace the screen he had to replace the whole top shell. So this is pretty much a whole new laptop minus the battery and the bottom shell. Even after all of that the same fingerprint problem persisted, even after OS reinstalls and driver updates. The HP has a slightly larger top bezel but that gives it facial recognition. And the fingerprint reader is large and I've never had any issues with it. Other issues I had came from the killer wireless card. The Wi-Fi was wildly unpredictable and Bluetooth had the worst lag I had ever seen. Any mouse was pretty much unusable over Bluetooth. If you stopped moving it for a few seconds, there would be a huge delay before it got started again. This would be less of an issue if I could just plug the mouse receiver into the laptop, but the XPS only has USB-C ports. Dell support was never able to help with these issues other than offer their advanced tech support for a fee. On top of that, the wireless card inside of the Dell is not upgradable, so I'm stuck with what I have. The HP, on the other hand, actually has a USB-A port, but the Bluetooth is actually responsive enough that I don't even need to plug anything in. On top of that, the Wi-Fi has been completely solid. Even the touch response of the screen is kind of weird feeling on the XPS. I don't know how to explain it, but the scrolling seems kind of disconnected from what I'm doing. I thought it was just how Windows handled touchscreens, but then I used the one on the HP and it scrolls just fine. Another thing that the Dell would do that would just frustrate me is that it would get blazing hot randomly with the fans running at full blast. Most of the time it would do this when it was just sitting closed on a table and charging. But there's also times when I'm taking it out of the bag and I find it's almost painful to the touch because of how hot it is. Again, Dell tech support wasn't very helpful here. And then the last straw that motivated me to go shopping for another laptop was battery life. And I don't mean while it's in use. That's pretty poor on the Dell as well, but I knew that going in because of the 4K screen. What I'm talking about is standby. If I'm using the XPS plugged in at home in the morning, close it and put it in my bag and don't do anything with it until the evening, I can expect to maybe have 70% battery remaining. If I wanted my battery to last a day while in my bag, I needed to remember to fully shut it down before leaving and then boot it back up when I needed it. This is normal according to Dell because it uses modern standby, which gives you a more immediate start when you open the laptop. Now, I'm from the days when laptops used to have 4200 RPM spinning hard drives and boot times were measured in minutes. I would be more than happy with a normal Hibernate that suspends the disk on a modern SSD. But according to Dell, there is no way to make the XPS perform in this way. The HP seems to work this way out of the box without any problem. If you open it up a short time after you closed it, it'll wake up right away and a little bit longer of a period of time. It'll take a longer time to boot, but not waste your battery. I've seen my battery last a few days sitting in my bag with no problem. All of these little things just added up to make the XPS a not enjoyable experience to use. The hardware is top notch, but the way it's configured just led to one annoyance after the other. And as I researched these specific issues, I was finding that I wasn't alone. The reviewers who test laptops generally don't live with them. So the spec sheet and initial impressions are what gets the most coverage. While the issue might be just with this Ice Lake XPS 2-in-1, I got to the point where I was done trying to deal with Dell. I looked seriously at some of the new AMD platform laptops, and they all look pretty amazing, and I almost bought one. But then HP came out with the Spectre X360 14. The 2-in-1 3x2 form factor with a high resolution OLED display at less than 3 pounds grabbed my attention, and a Black Friday sale sealed the deal. And so far, Everything that I found annoying about the Dell has been fixed here. I mean, that's not to say that the HP doesn't have its own set of annoyances. I would love it if there was a USB-C port on the left side so I can charge from either side like on the Dell. And I'm still getting used to the keyboard. It's actually a great feeling keyboard. It has traditional scissor switches and they feel quick and responsive with a decent amount of travel, but it shifted over to the left just a little bit for a row of navigation keys along the right. So I have to say I've hit the home button more than a few times when I'm intending to hit backspace. The volume on the Spectre also was initially very low, but it seems like there was an update that fixed it, and now it's louder and fuller sounding than the Dell. While no product will ever be completely perfect for every person, when you spend this kind of money on a toy for yourself, you expect that it will at least not aggravate you every time you used it. With the XPS, I found myself simultaneously impressed with the hardware and the build quality, and infuriated with the user experience. The Spectre feels just as great all around, and some of the aspects are completely unique to the Spectre. None of its downsides come to the forefront and impede my enjoyment of using the machine. 
The mobile computing space has so many amazing options out there, but I can fairly confidently say that this Spectre X360 14 fits my needs perfectly. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but until next time, never stop having fun.